Now let's see what happens if you forget to connect to the radio. So I'm going to disconnect from this radio. And then I'm going to go over here and try to connect to it. It still appears over here if I do this. But it's not connected over here as a radio. So I say OK and I try to connect. And this thing blinks for a while and it blinks for a while. I can turn the scope off here. And it blinks and blinks and blinks. And it's finally going to give you the familiar message communication failed. Now the reason for this is it doesn't have the right CIV address. So it's sending packets through the server radio to a couple of different, uh, to the server computer, to a couple of radios but it's not sending it's not sending the correct CIV address see here COM7 with a 7C CIV address let me put this thing away here this memory memory locations but the 7C radio you see over here is not connected so no wonder it fails so I have to, you have to disconnect this of course it'll work with this one because it's connected. Now that's one of the ways to cause that failure. Here's another way. Let's go ahead and connect to the radio now. Remember you have to be connected on the server to make this work. Now let's go to the connect set. And let's do something like say, oh no, I don't know. I don't, it's, it's, I'm using the remote. Okay, so you're trying to outsmart this program. It, it knows that this radio is connected by USB. But you'll try this trick. Let me try uh, saying that it's cooked up to remote. So I'm going to say connect. And it'll try and blink and all that stuff. And it looks like it's actually doing something. Even though it's not using the USB port. Now this is what's strange. Even though it turned the radio on, when it went to use it, it couldn't get to the radio. Remember the other one was connection failed. Now it's communication failed. Can't access even the radio. So turn that off again. In order for this program to work, now it's not even going to shut the radio down. This is how bad it gets if you don't have the right setting. So let me say that this is not remote. This is USB. And there's the radio. I'm going to go ahead and connect again. Don't worry about that mod change thing. I'm not going to connect. The radio is still on, by the way. As you can hear. And uh, my dogs are excited about something. So, there you go. And we have activity on uh, 40 meters. not very strong. So that's how you use two radios. That's how you can create a failure. Okay, third way is to pick the wrong serial port. Let me override the serial port. It says COM port 7. Let me just pick one that's not even in the list. COM port 10. Say OK. Try to connect to it. Keeps bringing this thing up. Here, this COM port is supposed to be uh, COM port 7. And it will get automatically selected correctly. And here we go. Communication failed, etc., etc. So let's disconnect here again and go over here to the connect set. Let me just switch radios. Now, you remember, I picked 10, which I know is wrong. Let me uh, change this to this, this radio. Now, if I switch back to that radio, it filled in the correct COM port because it read it from the ICOM remote utility. And sure enough, and you do want to have this software closing, turns off the radio. Now I want to connect to the 160 anyway. I don't want to go back to that one right now because the 160 has got activity. So I go here. This is COM8, which I know. Say so connect. And a couple of other things you might want to change when you're in here. 
Now this time it came up lower sideband and it's correct. And this is 1.93. Let me turn the volume up a little bit. See if there's anything going on that I can hear. Okay. So now you can use uh, memory here and you can uh, set frequencies. This happens to be the Toad Harbor net on 1.93. If I pick a different one, CW test, this switched the frequencies. And then uh, Radio China in English. Can't hear it. If you want to go back to that uh, Toad Harbor net, pick this, and it tunes it in again. So that's how you can use the memory channel.